Hi, I am Gaurav Dave and I welcome you to the analysis of Enmat 2019. So, how was Enmat 2019 different or similar compared to last year or any of the preceding Enmats? Structurally, there was hardly any change in the Enmat with the same question structure that is 48 questions in quantitative skills, 40 questions in logical reasoning, and 32 questions in language skills or verbal ability the time allocated to each section was also the same also the provision of selecting the order in which you want to attempt each section was given to you like every earlier in mat so broadly there was no change in terms of the overall structure so what changed this year there was a minor change in terms of the topics and sub topics covered in the in mat exam but again for a well prepared student this would not have been something that would have come as a surprise let's start off with each section starting with the quantitative skills or qa section a small change that has been reported across each slot so far is that the number of data sufficiency or ds questions has gone down marginally contrary to the earlier breakup which used to be 20 questions for DI, 6 for DS, and 22 for problem solving. This year the breakup was 20 for DI, 5 for DS, and 23 for problem solving. Another change compared to last year was that the logical puzzle that appeared last year did not make an appearance this year. Now, what does that mean? In maths up to 2017 used to have 5 DI sets of 4 questions each. 2018 had a small break with a set on conditionalities and grouping appearing in that year. This year in math reverted to type with 5 sets on DI. These sets as usual were calculation intensive, data intensive and you had to understand each table and graph in great detail in order to attempt these questions correctly however once you understood that data and formed a small table collating all that data answering all the questions was relatively easy the key part of this section was question selection and more importantly set selection so once you identified the two or three sets that you wanted to attempt everything else fell into place typically across slots what we have seen is that there are two sets that are tabular in nature and three sets that have a combination of multiple graphs these could be multiple pie charts bar plus pie bar plus line two line graphs etc coming to data sufficiency again across slots it has been reported that the questions on data sufficiency have veered towards being on divisibility and odd even numbers so this has been a trend reported exclusively for this year finally coming to problem solving problem solving as we saw had 23 questions this was dominated by modern math and arithmetic with a little representation from numbers and geometry there was hardly any question from algebra so modern math included areas such as permutations and combinations probability apgp logarithms and a one off question on sets which was also based on number theory arithmetic had the typical n mat favorites such as ratio and proportion time and work time and distance profit and loss percentages variation etc all in all this section was more or less on expected lines a well prepared student could have attempted 35 to 36 questions with 85% accuracy and any attempt close to 35 would be considered a good attempt now moving to the logical reasoning section again in terms of the structure of this section there was a small change historically nmat has had anywhere between 12 to 13 verbal reasoning questions over the last couple of years this proportion has increased So in 2018 we had 15 verbal reasoning questions whereas this year the number of questions from verbal reasoning has been reported at 16 the remaining 24 questions have been strictly non verbal reasoning 
started with the non verbal reasoning questions first this covered a combination of groups and individual questions as is typical for nmat a surprise in one of the slots was that there were two sets on sequential output tracing as also a set on grouping people was very conditional in nature and not typical of the matrix based set that you would expect in nmat however these were all on the easier side contrary to earlier nmats this was followed by the standard nmat questions such as relationship puzzles direction based puzzles coding and decoding number and letter series etc so these were all the common question types coming to verbal reasoning in verbal reasoning again you had the common question types but the quantity or the number of questions increased so there were questions on courses of action where you had a passage with three or four courses of action you had statements and conclusions implicit statements statements and inferences strong weak arguments a typical nmat question type that is decision making which is more of hr based decision making and then you had standard syllogism based questions all in all again this year's lr section so far has been reported to be slightly easier compared to last year and anywhere close to 28 attempts with 85% accuracy would be a good performance for this section last but not the least let's move on to the language skills or verbal ability section like each year there were two passages the length more or less average at 400 to 500 words with reasonably simple topics based on say education pollution etc these were eminently readable and the questions though being inferential in nature were doable however the rc passages could have been left for last because the non rc questions were very simple and could have been attempted very quickly the non rc questions that were asked this year covered all the standard areas such as single and double fill in the blanks lot of analogies preposition based fill in the blanks standard vocabulary based questions synonyms antonyms phrases etc close passages and jumbled sentences but comprising either four or five statements again on the whole very standard section and anywhere close to 25 attempts with 85% accuracy would be a great performance so on the whole if we look at nmat 2019 so far there have been minimal surprises a student who would have practiced a number of mocks would be in a great position to attempt this what else do you need to remember when you go and take nmat for nmat you need a set of documents you need your primary id a secondary id please carry a copy of your admit card you also need to have your confirmation email though this year you can show this confirmation email either on your phone or as a print out please also do not forget to carry a photocopy of your primary id because this is retained by the authorities at the test center your admit card is signed stamped and returned to you at the end of the test please preserve it very carefully because you will need it for all subsequent retakes and during the gdpi if you are selected for that round that's all from our side wish you all the very best for your subsequent attempts in nmat do well and thank you